Welcome to Nerdstalker, episode 12. I'm Adolfo Ferranda, at Nerdstalker on Twitter. And I'm Greg Valoria, uh, Social Greg on Twitter. So, hey, man, uh, happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day, my friend. Yeah. I, I'm not a veteran, but I, I do appreciate what they're doing out there for us. So. Absolutely. Thank you all that serve, that have served and are serving. So Number one. Yes. Okay. Wow. So, uh, what? You got you again. You uh, didn't disappoint me this week, Adolfo. You sent some pretty interesting things uh, my way this week. Um, so, uh, what's this Warner Brothers thing that they uh, are send some takedown notices uh, for files? Right, right. So it turns out that, and this is thanks to Corey Doctorow from Boing Boing for mentioning this. Uh, Warner Brothers has filed a brief in the lawsuit against a file locker service called Hot File, in which. Uh, Warner Brothers admits that it uh, sent copyright takedown notices to assuring it had good faith to believe that the files named infringed its copyright, despite the fact that it had never downloaded the files to check this, and that it sometimes named files that were not under Warner's copyright, um, including files that were perfectly legal. Among the files that Warner asked Hotfile to remove was a file called contacts.html. Now, as most people, well, some people out there know, almost every website has a contact page, right? And oftentimes it's contact.html is the name of the thing, right? Um, so this is this is really interesting, you know, because uh, the DMCA requires, uh, and now we're getting into some of the legal craziness here, that... Uh, mm -hmm. That, that a copyright holder issuing a takedown notice to state that it has a good faith that it hasn't, you know, that, that it knows that it hasn't given you permission to post it or um, has, hasn't flat out licensed it to you, you know? Right. And uh, by right. them automating this, it's hard to see how anyone at Warner could have formed any beliefs, good faith or otherwise, about the files it admits, says uh, Dr. O, that no human being at Warner had even looked at it, you know, at these files, you know? <laughs> I, I, you know that that goes into our uh, nerd soccer file called amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy but moly! I, I guess one of the things to note here too, what he's getting to, is that there's a um, a proposal uh, coming up here called the. Of course, mm. they give it one of these names, like it's called the Stop Online Privacy Act. You know how loaded is mm. that, right? Uh, yeah. Which is backed by yeah. the major Hollywood studios, uh, would give copyright holders new powers to cut off what to cut off websites, access to payment processors and advertising networks. It even includes a new DMCA style notice and takedown scheme. Uh, but given the cavalier way that Warner Brothers has issued the powers it already has under the DMCA, policymakers may be reluctant to expand those powers even further. Um, so watch out, people. Mm. You know, there. I guess this, there's a hearing coming up for the Stop Online Privacy Act BS, and, uh, you know, it's, knowledge is power. So. Hey, wow, Speaking of Hollywood... Cool. <laughs> More oh, Hollywood. Oh my huh? gosh! I, yeah, I, I was like, I saw your tweet about uh, Aston Kutcher uh, ah. is a cowardly <laughs> quitter. So tell me more about that. I mean, I, I know it, but I, I I want you to kind of lead this one in. Yeah, yeah. I never <laughs> thought we'd have to number one discuss Ashton Kutcher on Nerd Stalker unless he was investing in uh, in us or something or giving us money. <laughs> yeah. uh, when, when you put the hashtag on that one, I was quite surprised too. But yeah. I, after I looked at the backstory, you know, which you're going to explain right now, right, I was right. like, okay. So, so there's a, a a guy named I don't know if people have seen the news. Uh, Joe Paterno, uh, he's a what a coach, and one of his staff people is alleged to have had um, some some really horrific uh, allegations. You know, um, and, and it looks bad on him. He, he it's it's looking like the guy is you know one of these really dirty child kind of weirdos, right? You know, kind of into that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. horrible type of yeah. thing. Anyways, um, what he he found out about it and didn't report it to the police in, in a reasonable amount of time, I guess, or if at all. And um, he was fired subsequently, right? And um, yeah. I don't know if it's formal yet, but I believe so. And um, Ashton yeah, Kutcher yeah, said... formal. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. And Ashton Kutcher is, uh, he came out uh, in favor, like, hey, why do we fire uh, Joe Patern, Joe P, or something like that? And Yeah, uh, right, right. Come and on, guys, what do you fire him for? Yeah, and so obviously, I mean, Ashton Kutcher has about like 8 million followers or something, right? And all of these people, there was a big backlash against him, rightfully so, right? Saying, hey, man, you're you're the guy who wants to end, you know, represents the ending of child sex slavery, and here you are defending this monster. And um, so he... Uh, <laughs> 
he just flat out said, you know, that he's going to step away from his Twitter and that uh, having 8 million followers is a dangerous thing. And effectively, he's going to hand over, he says, you know, well, quote, I'm going to turn the management of the feed over to my team at Catalyst Media to ensure the quality of its content. Mark Pizarro points out Kutcher is a co-founder of Catalyst Media also. So you know that at least he's still pimping his own brand there. So. <laughs> Oh, I mean, come on. You know, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, most PR firms do handle a lot of these big accounts. I mean, you know, the, the, you know, I mean, I think, you know, there's, there's always these like little hints that it was originally from the person, whether it's a, you know, a, a basketball star or you know, a sports star or so on. You, you could get little, little breadcrumbs to know that it, it is the guy who's actually doing it, not not his PR agent or some other ghost. Uh, Branson Invest in Mobile Payment Startup Square. Yeah, that was good. I, I mean, I got a lot of retweets on that one when I sent it out this week. So, so basically, uh, Regina uh, Sinsky from CNET. I, I read that once in a while. Um, uh, Richard Branson decided to um, invest in the uh, startup Square. You know, he just thought it was a great idea. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he we we quote him as saying, "I'm very passionate about helping people start and grow successful businesses." And Square is an incredible technology that inspires and empowers everyone to be an entrepreneur. Now, you know. I, I don't know what, you know, I don't know how it's going to benefit Virgin, but I got a feeling it will somehow, somewhere, someday. Um, but, um, you know, if anyone doesn't know the Square, right, the Square is this thing that goes onto your iPhone and allows you to swipe a credit card, right, across it. And it's basically, a, you know, a mobile e-commerce transactional thing, right? So it's pretty cool. I mean, we, we use it actually for all our events uh, yeah. when people come in. We, we we put the square on the iPhone and away we go. So it's yeah. not a bad product. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of competition out there. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe one of these days I should probably um, sort that out and put that on mm. the nerdsoccer.com mm. thing. So yeah, anyway, I think by the by yeah. the time we get to that, there'll probably be a whole bunch more popping up. You know, there'll be a ton of them out yeah. there. Yeah, but yeah, square I mean, is I a very cool thing. Earlier this week. Yeah, I've heard yeah, uh, so, I heard yeah. strippers are using it. I heard uh, crafty people are doing it at their little street fairs and selling stuff, you know, themselves. Uh, it's or great on the corners or, or that too, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have an iPhone, you have a Square, you're in business. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what you don't anyway, have uh, is Flash. <laughs> How's that yeah. for a segue? Oh, man, that was a great segue. <laughs> I, so uh, Adobe's putting the white flag up, Adolfo? <laughs> I'm sure we've most of you out there have heard by now, right? And I, for one, would like to say, I told you so again. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you know, I am an Android user here. This is my Droid X, as I, you know, I cry about every week. Um, and one of the big selling points back in the day, yes, was uh, we have Flash and you don't iPhone, right? Because Apple and his uh, and Steve Jobs and his uh, letter about Adobe or about Flash stated that they were not going to put it out anymore because it was this resource hog and this and that and. Adobe was like, mm, that's fine. We're going to go with uh, Android and we're put it out there for everyone else. They made attempts at, uh, you know, um, putting on Apple and one of their press releases they just put out here. They were saying, you know, oh, you know, we weren't getting then the adoption, one of this and that. And seeing that we couldn't, you know, despite what we did, we couldn't get on the iOS, you know, that we right, just knew it wasn't right. going to happen. And, and then right. in the fine print, you see, you know, we just couldn't you know, resources were a problem. I mean, we were hogging, you know, the thing just would not perform very well. I, I know I would hate to use Flash on my, my Droid because my battery would just go down instantly, you know? Um, you know, wouldn't it be funny if there was something like that that actually brought the 4S down, battery down? Wouldn't that be <laughs> Even <hilarious>? more, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you have 10 minutes talk time now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're effectively, well, you know, they're saying HTML5 is the winner now. Yeah. But, you know, I, Apple and Adobe has had a really interesting relationship mm -hmm. over the years, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, where Apple has actually invested in Adobe or vice versa, I, I heard. So it, it was been kind of an interesting relationship, if yeah. you think about it. Um, I think, you know, they adopted a lot of um, Adobe technology for a lot of their laser writers on in Apple, right, in, in the early, early days, right? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, they they 
they've had a relationship. It's just that, you know, I, I mean, Jobs was right. I, I'm old. I'm sorry. You said it ahead of Jobs, so I, for, I forgot. Did you, you brought that up first? But <laughs> but, but Jobs had, but Jobs had said that yeah, you know, there's no effing way that we're gonna put that on, on, on any of our iOS things. Right, yeah. right, right. And well, and also, so, I mean, so. they got they got kind of hosed too. I mean, because they weren't the Microsoft uh, market size uh, leader, their version of Flash on the desktop would not get updated as often. You know, and so right. Um, Right. But but yeah, you're right. Uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, the whole Adobe suite itself in terms of software, that kind of thing, has always been huge on on, on Apple's because pre- predominantly, it's, you know, designers use Apple devices. Um, but this Absolutely. is this is a huge, very interesting point in uh, Adobe's business per se. I mean, this is I think this mm. is sort of the defining moment here where they're making a huge pivot, so to speak. Uh, to HTML5. So this is the gamble. I think this is the defining moment, sort of like when Microsoft said, okay, we're, we're going with this Internet Explorer thing. Web business is going to be a priority for us also. You know, this Internet Explorer thing yeah. is going to be a priority. Yeah. And they killed they killed Mozilla, right? They killed Netscape, essentially, right. in doing yeah. so. So I, I think right. this, is, this is Adobe's moment to, like, it's sort of sink or swim here. Are they going to be a sort of a software type of company that's going to float on the success of uh, Acrobat and and, um, and Photoshop and, Photoshop and that whole suite, yeah. right? Or are they going to yeah. still have some sort of play in this mobile and, and web space, you know, go forward? So um, we'll see. They mention Air, but they, they seem to be putting all the, uh, all the you know, all the chips in to, uh, with HTML5, um, as, as are most other companies right now, too. So I yeah. think they, they need to get this early lead. Yeah, I think they just need to get on, you know, the, the trains left the station and they just get get on the HTML train, yeah. the HTML5 trains. Sorry, so Flash devel- just, developers. Sorry, guys. Yeah, well, 750 of them are losing their jobs. So I don't know they're all uh, developers, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Adobe announced that as well this week. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not good. Yeah, wow. Okay, well, that that was big. That was probably the biggest one of the week. I agree. That's huge, huge. So uh, how about the how about what you posted? Uh, Firefox eight cracks down on add-ons. Okay, What's this about? yeah, I'm okay. I'll admit I'm a Firefox user. Um, I love though Firefox I too. Do, yeah, I mean, I do Firefox and Chrome, yeah, so I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, che- I'm, I'm cheating on both sides. Right? <laughs> but anyway, um, when I updated it this week, it was interesting. Um, I it, it actually asked me, uh, "Do you are you sure you wanted to put these apps uh, or you know add-ons into Firefox?" And I'm like, "What?" And then suddenly, um, you know, Stephen uh, Shanklin from CNET News, I finally picked up an article, and he said, "You know." Um, you know, basically, one of the developers uh, said in uh, a blog, you know, these add-ons installed by third parties present a number of problems to Mozilla. They can slow down Firefox startup and page loading time. They can clutter the interface with toolbars that go often unused. Um, they lag behind on compatibility and security updates, blah, 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 blah. Wow. Basically, you know, Mozilla is just scared to death with all these plugins going on. They don't have any control. So they're oh, wow. trying to exert some control to say, okay, if it hasn't gone past our eyes first, mm-hmm. you, can't, you can't have it. Google, Google TV will outperform the Apple iTV. I said outporn for a second there, I think. Well, yeah, you know where so. you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I changed the tweet out just on this because I, I said, really, why Google TV will outperform Apple ITV? Well, it turns out um, Mark Hatchman from uh, PC Mag wrote this week, adult film studio Vivid Entertainment. I, I, I don't know Vivid, but uh, yeah, I don't right. know what that is. <laughs> said Monday it will launch Google TV's first sexually explicit app. Um, so I put in in my um, scoop it. Uh, let the content wars begin. So 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 they you know it, it, it's it's funny, right? Apple is definitely anti-adult content. Google says. Ah, you know, if we can make some money, we'll have it on there. <laughs> so mm, it's wow. kind of a funny business philosophy both yeah. of these companies have, right? Uh, so it's it was interesting, but you know, as we know. Um, Ad revenue from uh, you know uh, uh, sexually explicit sites uh, is pretty high. So well, you know, um, with this open source, even Android uh, market, there was this sort of like anything goes, right, kind of thing. Yeah. Also, so you had say, uh, some, I guess, explicit um, 
apps, right? On uh, yes. on Android, yes. whereas uh, iOS it was not as much. Not, <laughs> yeah, not not as much. But um, you know, I think that also um, it it may be an interesting play to revive Google TV again, right? Mm. If you think about it, right? I mean, uh, I think. So let's talk about know, this Logitech thing. Huh? Yeah, I mean, Logitech said. Remember, they came out last year with these review uh, set top boxes. And uh, apparently on the boxes. earnings call this okay. week, yeah, um, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the you know, I, the I saw those things yeah. at uh, Best Buy, you know, the Google oh, yeah? TV, you know, the old ones. Oh yeah, right, right, right. right. Um, they just haven't sold. So you know, Logitech came out with this thing called Review mm-hmm. a Set Top Box, uh, you know, and their president said that. You know, we've lost a hundred million dollars from this, <laughs> so you know we're just gonna let the inventory run out this quarter. You know, <laughs> meaning that <laughs> meaning that the, the, they said basically we're gonna go to the sideline, watch the game. This is like <laughs> yeah, a, this I is mean, like the HP playbook or whatever part two or whatever it is, right? Well, isn't it? Yeah, isn't yeah. it? I I, I just mean, dead hardware. You know, yeah, yeah, and and you know again, you know they're claiming the hundred million loss on 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 these you know uh, Google TV Logitech review boxes. Well, I, you know, I mean, I do agree that you know Google TV maybe is a little bit far behind mm-hmm. or not not where we need to be in its adoption uh, yeah. model. Yeah. Um, but you know, Google has the deep pockets to ride out those type of models, right? If if they introduce something too early for the market, they could ride it out. Where they're smaller companies, they just can't, right? So, uh, lesson learned, I guess, for Logitech. But uh, you know, uh, you know, I I heard Sony's going to actually come out with a Google TV implementation. So, you know, there's going to be another player in the market soon so you know, you know there's, maybe it's funny to, how yeah. there's no real no real front runner or leader at this point besides i don't know you could say like netflix and itunes right but um yeah uh yeah. in terms of like set top box kind of things i mean you got your boxies and your your roku's and even right, those are right. you know more for kind of it hasn't gained widespread adoption yet it's more kind of a nerdy type of thing yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, we watch TV via cable, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, even if you can make the argument you do. for not me, the... I'm a cord cutter. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I forgot. You, you know, <laughs> one of these nerd stalker episodes, you got to show us your network. You know, we'll, we'll follow <laughs> you setup. around your house yeah, yeah, to yeah. show you. This is how high tech Adolfo and is, how but... and how I'm begging all my friends to watch the free UFC fight on Fox tomorrow because I don't have Fox, <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh my god! But yeah, there sorry. are pros and cons to that whole thing. Yeah, sorry, I know, but um, but I think you know, I I think you know we'll see in the next coming coming years the uh, bit growing and mm-hmm. you know the cable operators obviously I love to see what they come out with. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, AT and T had the Uverse for a while. I I think its adoption is 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 pretty much nil. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I, I think it's it's just early. I think people are just wondering what the content's going to be like, and so I think Google has a neat approach to saying that, hey, we're going to provide some channels coming up. Um, so they're basically following the cable model in terms of, you know, you could watch sports, you could watch this, and, and I think that's the right play um, mm-hmm. and use their search engine to kind of focus those results into Google TV. That that makes a lot of sense. I think that's, we talked about it a couple episodes ago, or you know, a couple. Um, podcast ago so i think it's okay so. yeah i guess the verge just uh announced uh some breaking news today that their google made some sort of announcement i'm sort of springing this one on you that mm. something's oh, yeah, coming up right. it goes to 11 or something for 11 11 11 day today or something they're going to be announcing the rumor is some sort of um i think music service or something I'm not yes, sure no, it's, yes, it's all yes, rumor right yes. now so i don't know if it's gonna be yes, yes. more tv kind of stuff or, or music but the rumors tend to be uh, going with this with this music rumor, so for whatever it's worth, that's the Verge who just broke this story. So yeah, no, no, no that'll be great. Just I mean, let's talk about there. it. Uh, 
well, let's let's see if it actually uh, comes to fruition and yeah. there's an official announcement. We could talk about it next week too. So it's cool. So do you have any tips for us, uh, Mr. Adolfo? Yeah. So my tip of the week is again. I feel like I'm just all I'm doing is pimping NerdStalker.com here, but it is a post on NerdStalker. But it is not my content. It's actually Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a famous sort of social media guy. Actually uh, has a site called used to have a site. Of, no, they do still. WineLibrary.tv, yeah, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where they sell yeah. wine online and um, and he's tough. He's he's really uh, quite quite big in the social media circles now and uh, anyways he gives an amazing talk at uh, the Inc. 500 or 5000 whatever you nice. want to check it out so go to nerdstalker.com nice. look for you could even search for Gary it's it's on the front page you should find it it's a must watch I think for any marketer any um, definitely social media person and anyone yeah. in business in general especially a business leader a pre, an existing business leader um, yeah. you can see how your your marketing efforts are, are you know, um, becoming kind of a dinosaur, if not just, um, uh, yet another sort of channel. Um, mm. and so his argument yeah. say, right. being essentially it, to boil it down is, um, that context mm. is sort of everything now. And, uh, we're now in the age of this sort of one-on-one -on -one marketing where you can just sort of communicate with one person type of thing. And, um, yeah. and anyways, check it out. It's, I can't even explain what a what a great talk it is he drops a lot of f-bombs and stuff and uses the jersey thing yeah, a bit. He's like that but that's his but thing, the so. content is is very good so especially the yeah. the last piece of of the of the talk so it's definitely worth watching the i think it's like an hour or something like that talk but very okay. well worth so, it highly yeah. recommend it to all you you know business-minded types out there yeah so it's pg-13 huh or, or <laughs> yeah, r yeah, uh, yeah. probably <laughs> r. R. I think probably it's r. r okay r no no r. i, I I, I actually, I think last year we had a couple of interns. I asked them to actually model um, Gary's stuff, and it was quite quite fascinating when we sat down and did that. Um, we saw how their social networks were all interacting with one another with their video show and everything mm -hmm. else, and it was just kind of cool to watch. I, you know, it was just... You know, it's one of those things where I don't have enough time to do it, and mm -hmm. I, I let the intern kind of go at it, and it was just amazing what they came up with graphically. And so we we use some of that modeling actually on some of our clients. So that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, very cool. So how about you, Greg? Your tip? Oh yeah. Um, well, you know, it's kind of a kind of a lead in from last week. You know, we were talking about kids and cell phones, and I thought about that a little bit more, and then. Uh, uh, you know, there was uh, Scott Steinberg, um, which is the author of the Modern Parents uh, Guidebook, um, you know, and host of family show, uh, Family Tech, uh, Technology for Parents and Kids. Uh, Very cool. He, he wrote a great article about on CNN about uh, – you know, kids and technologies and the rules of online safety. So, oh, so neat. basically, this is a great kind of like a primer, I would mm -hmm. call it, for a quick primer for – parents to kind of just think about how to introduce technology in with their kids oh, and, 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 and and how to get up to speed. I mean, you know, with all the kids being on Facebook, with all the kids, you know, under 13, you know, having access to technology mm -hmm. now, I thought it was a great follow-up from last week's when we talked about, you know, smartphones, um, cell phones and stuff. It, it was, you know, I, I don't really look at CNN as a really serious news source, but once in a while, yeah, they yeah. come up with some pretty good stuff, and this was this one was worth uh, That's looking great. at. I'm so definitely we'll, going to check that out. Yeah. Thanks for that one, Greg. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, so, uh, what do we got with New I Tech, guess, man? Oh, hey, uh, Tuesday, November 15th, November 15th. Uh, we have uh, APIs. So, um, APIs are coming back to uh, SF New Tech. We had an uh, API event early in the summer, I think, and now uh, the second one uh, due to popularity. So, we have uh, leaders like Twilio, Talkbox is going to be there. Oh, great. So it's going to be a pretty cool event. So catch it on sfnewtech.com. Uh, 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 pick up your tickets there. If you can't see it, pick it on uh, the front page of SF New Tech Live, uh, or you can pick it up on Ustream, and Very I'll cool. be streaming and interacting with you guys there. So nice. Uh, but nice. people yeah. out there, don't forget to contribute to NerdStalker by using the hashtag NRDSTK. Um, and to what catch uh storify too? Yeah, yeah. Well, I put all our backstories on Storify plus on my Tumblr page, and I link back so you guys could see exactly the tweets and everything that we see. Uh, Storify is great because a lot of the people who retweet us will get 
um, thanked uh, by a dolphin I personally. Ah, a little social um, juice, good. Don't forget to visit uh, nerdstalker.com and to listen to, you can either download, the, subscribe to the podcast, you know, uh, audio or video if you want, uh, and iTunes, so please check it out. And uh, you can watch us on YouTube or whatever you want. Uh, search for uh, Nerdstalker TV, all one word, Nerdstalker t- uh, TV on uh, YouTube, and you'll see our videos. Um, and I am cool. Adolfo Ferranda, so you can catch me on Twitter at Nerdstalker, or you can email me, Adolfo, at nerdstalker.com. How about you? I'm Greg Gloria, uh, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and I have one shameless shout-out. Oh, uh, my friend Magumi has a birthday today, uh-huh. um, and want to wish her a happy birthday. Um, happy she, birthday. She's great supporting supporting B-Tracks and a lot of things that I do personally, so I yes. want to give a shout-out to her. And you can catch me on socialgregsf at gmail.com. See. Thanks for joining us All this right. week, everyone. Yeah. Hey, be careful out there. But popular, um, popular amongst the community that hmm. isn't. Greg.